Hello and welcome back to Rail Stuff. It's been a long time uh, since I sat down and put a video together. Um, the show season this year was really busy, really good. Great to meet so many of you out and about at model railway shows up and down the country. Um, next year is is well under under planning as well, um, and we'll be starting off show season next year. Uh, in Doncaster, so we'll be heading to the BRM show at Doncaster, uh, the British Festival of Railway Modelling, I think I think it's called, at uh, Doncaster Racecourse in the middle of uh, February, before then going on to Model Rail Scotland for our second year up in Glasgow, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but I'm back at a workbench, and that's because I've been watching so many of your videos out there and getting loads of inspiration to... Uh, sit down and, and do some modelling, really. Um, but it has been an awful long while. And one of the things that's always put me off a little bit is the fact that I don't have space for a, for a layout. Especially not with a baby in the house these days. You know, there are uh, priorities. Like, apparently he needs a nursery rather than me having a train room. It's fine. I can cope with that. Um, so... What I'm going to do instead is, uh, once again, start working on dioramas. Uh, so I've got this board here. I don't actually know what size this is, but you know you can kind of figure it out from comparing my hands to the, the size of the board. It's not huge, um, but you can see here uh, I've covered it completely in cork. Uh, I did originally have this little idea of just creating a yard with a um, with a with a shed in it and and that being it. Um, but then I saw uh, at a few shows this year some like multi-layer setups or, or things that involved tracks running at, at uh, two different heights, and I quite liked that. So I wanted to create something. Um, that had two tracks running through it at two different heights. Um, one of which is going to be this one here, which is very much um, a line into a shed, and that is it. Um, because what you are essentially going to see in this small scene here is um, a small portion of a yard, uh, and then there will be a retaining wall slash viaduct uh, across the back um, with another line sat on top of that. Um, as an example of the kind of thing that I'm talking about, I'm going to be using these L-Cut Creative uh, laser cut kits, um, which you can get from rail-stuff.com. There's the plug you were all waiting for. Uh, and they come in a variety of different forms, so like a plain brick arch unit or uh, ones with warehouse fittings, and hopefully you can see that there. Uh, they've got windows and, and doors built into them, um, and also one with a, with a shop style fitting as, as well. Um, so I'm going to use a, a variety of these uh, to create um, an arches across the back here. Um, and there'll probably then be a, a very small roadway that runs in front of those arches. Uh, maybe then a, a, a fence that separates uh, the yard area, or what we can see of the yard area from the road area. Um, and then we'll see a small amount of yard area this side of the fence. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and like I say, there'll be a what would be part of a, a main line running across the top of the arches um, and then this part where you'd see the, the startings of a yard. Um, and really what I want to do is um, something a bit rough and ready um, that just gets me back into doing a bit of modelling. Um, but here's the aim. I would like to have a well-finished, well-decorated diorama that I can put inside a box and take with me to Doncaster in the middle of February. So that's the plan, that's the project, is to have a diorama that can come on tour with me uh, to model railway shows next year. So, what do I need to achieve? 
quite a lot actually, so I guess we'd better get started. So as per usual with anything like this, the first thing that I need to do is, is some planning things out, some thinking things out. Um, one of the things I like about working on a diorama this size is that I can fit it on my table and I can do it all here. Um, this shed you may recognise by the way, this is the um, the JS Models shed that I built uh, in a video a few months ago. Um, I'll put the link in the description below um, in case you want to go and have a watch that video there, lovely kit <coughs> from JS Models. Um, but also you get some nice kits from Elcut Creative as well. Um, and that's probably one of the places I need to start is actually by having a look at one of these kits so that I can see sizings of the arches area. Um, so we're just going to open this one here, the A00002 double O gauge uh, brick arch unit with warehouse fittings um, and in there let's open this up so you can see uh, obviously you get all of the parts that you need to build it um, and some instructions there the instructions are uh, fairly basic but pretty straightforward um, there's not a lot that, that you can do wrong with this um, I think the the other thing of note though is that these kits are great for a bit of kit bashing as well so for example this one here you can either assemble it in low relief configuration and double the width that you get from one pack or you can assemble it um, using I think it's this one here is like the the, the top of the the archway um, for for the for the track or road to run on. Um, so yeah, there's there's plenty of different options um, in terms of how uh, you do it. So yes, there you go. I'm just looking at the instructions whilst talking to you. You get this one here, which is for a single width, or this one here for a double track. Uh, width so you can you can choose um, but then in amongst all of the other little bits and pieces including windows and um, fittings and things like that you, you get the arch pieces themselves um, and then you get the arch fill-ins as well so if you imagine you know that sort of sits in there and fills in that that arched area um, there's another one there with the with the, with the window holes cut out, um, there's gates and windows and uh, and also these like pillar covers with brickwork and things like that as well. Uh, the reason I needed to open this right now though was uh, really to have a look at how much of the back portion of the diorama uh, this is going to take up. Now. I'm probably going to just run this with a uh, single track on top. So let's just lay that, that single track piece on there. And that gives us an idea of the distance out from the back that I will need for these archways. Now I'll probably bring it forward just to give myself a bit of uh, extra space there. But that's the kind of uh, distance that we're looking at. Now you may notice that this line runs slightly diagonally uh, across the board. The archway I'm going to have um, run uh, straight across the back of the board. It's very rare that these things all line up perfectly and neatly. So you know, just want to create that that um, uh, that sort of dynamic there that it's it's not all perfectly straight because it wouldn't be in, in real life anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just mark out across the back here um, that kind of distance from the back and mark a line in so that I can see um, the space that I need to leave for that. Right, so that gives me an idea of where it's going to sit. Um, now, even though this isn't going to be a low relief arch. I'm not going to be seeing both sides once I've done the diorama. I'm only going to see this front side here. 
so therefore I'm going to use it like it's low relief so I'm not putting any of the the nice detailed pieces on the back where it will never be seen um, which means that, that these pieces will sit on the front um, but what it does mean is that I'm going to need to construct something across the back that then holds the uh, the correct structure in place um, so I'll probably do something out of cardboard maybe a bit of plastic card um, where I just uh, measure the, the height here um, and run something all the way along the back that this can mount to um, that will need some structure going across it as well because it will need to then carry uh, a rail track across the top um, so that's the plan um, and uh, next time you see it hopefully that piece of work will be done So at this point, um, I've rummaged through a few different L-Cut Creative kits that I had, um, and I've got one, two, three, four, five frontages. <coughs> um, one, two, three with the blanking plates in, if you will, um, the, yeah, that are bricked up. Um, and then we've got one with the warehouse fittings and one that's going to have shop fittings which is in this pile of stuff here um, it, this is the really nice thing about the L-Cut kits as well is that they're interchangeable so you can use them modular so I've got bits and pieces of L-Cut kits where I've used some bits haven't used other bits and I can just kind of combine them together um, when I start to put them together these pieces here which are the uh, like the brickwork pillars, um, they will actually act as the, the joining piece um, uh, you know, from section to section and also will provide the brickwork pillar for that section as well. I'm going to end up needing to trim a little bit either end um, because it's just slightly wider than the board but that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I expected. What I've kind of got left now is a is a plethora of, of different bits and pieces, some of which I'm going to need, some of which I'm not. So I'm just sort of going to sort those out into um, into piles now, so that I know what I've got. Um, these narrow clear pieces here are the, uh, the the track bed, if you will, for across the top of the arches. So ideally, I need one, two, three, four, five of these. So I've got one, two, three. Or do I have one more? What's the betting that I am one short of full load? Insert jokes here. Um, of course, if I am short, then um, I can just use some of the double track ones and uh, uh, and cut one down. That's not a, a major issue. Um, but I was hoping to save myself that job. Um, but uh, Nope, it does look like I am one short of a full load. Once again, insert jokes here. Uh, I'll double check my packets over here. Um, but yes, so each one of these will then uh, carry the track across the top there, and I'll need to cut one of these down uh, for the final piece. Um, I'm going to need more brick pillars. Um, so let's see, so I'm going to need one there, one there, I need one there, 
and one there, and one there. Probably won't need one at the end because I'm going to have to cut that one short. Um, I've then got these pieces here, um, which I think are for the inside of the, the the tops, if that makes any sense. So these will face inwards, so give you the brickwork onto the track. And they've then got the uh, interlocking between them um, that can help build up the, the strength um, of the run going across. So we'll need one of those, one of those, uh, one of those, one of those, and one more. Now ideally I'd have another one, two, three, four, five of those so that I can um, you know, have the, the brickwork on, on the other side that you'll be able to see as well. So let's see how many of those I've got. I've got one, two, what you're basically watching is a video of me counting at the minute. It's probably not the, the greatest YouTube content in the world, but it's probably not the worst you've seen either. Okay, so I've only got two more. I've got loads of brick pillars, so it might be something we could do there, or might be something we could do with some of these pieces. Um, this is the thing, I have got scrap bits of brick left over. Um, so I'll put those there as well, just that, um, this is for that one, that's for that one, and that's for that one as well, and then that's for that one, and that's for that one, and then we've got all manner of other bits and pieces, um, like more brick pillars there, we've got more joining pieces and, and all sorts here. So obviously this isn't the recommended way of going about um, building these kits, do it properly, um, but uh, what I'm doing is, is bashing a few of these together um, to make what I want and need. So um, you know, this kind of works for me. Anyway, I'm going to carry on organising this stuff um, and I still need to work out some kind of structure for behind it to support all of this stuff, um, which to be fair, I may end up using some of these pieces here uh, to do exactly that. So, stand by.
So a couple of days later, um, and this is all really nice and solid now, uh, as one strong piece. So I'll just show you on underneath as well. Um, these are the little bracing pieces that I added on, just to add some some strength. Um, and of course that will then sit across the back here. Now I'm going to need to sort out something across the back um, so that it stands up. Um, so for now I've been using a, um, a spare piece of um, arch, I'm just wedging that on there so it's all the right heights and everything and standing up nicely. Um, but in doing that, you know, that is quite strong on the top there, which then makes me think maybe I'm just going to have to open another packet of these and just use the other arches to um, add the strength there, even though you're not actually going to be able to see the, the arches from the back. The alternative is to cut some other pieces of, um, of wood or, or plastic card or something like that, but... Um, Strength-wise, there's something quite nice about having that slot pre-cut in there, and it's all the right height. And I've got these pieces as well, um, you know. But I'm not sure. I'd sort of have to just glue those on there, and yeah, I think these ones are going to provide me with the strength that I need. Uh, so I'm going to go find another pack of those um, and open that up and um, do the run across the back. So with that, we've now got the brick all on the insides of both sides, we've got a bit more structural integrity now. Um, when I think about it, I think it's okay having these arches open at the back because I do want to be able to get in at the back and put some lighting in for these two units that you'll be able to see into at the front. Uh, I've still got a shop front to put in there and some windows and doors to put in there as well. Um, obviously there's a lot more work to be done um, to the arches as well because uh, there's more details to go on like the coping stones on the tops there's the, the tabs to trim off there's the windows and doors and the shutters and um, and there's all sorts of plus and then at some point it's going to need painting um, but I think this was an important first step just to get this build underway um, I can already hear the questions, by the way, what glue are you using? Uh, Deluxe Materials uh, Laser Cut Kit Glue, if, if the camera is catching that okay. Um, available at rail-stuff.com, of course. Um, can't recommend it highly enough for doing laser cut kits, actually. Uh, I used to just use PVA, and just using PVA by, its fine, by itself is absolutely fine. Um, it'll work, I just find that that, that bonds so quickly. Um, it's very very strong, uh, very easy to use as well uh, with the applicator that, that comes on the, on the bottle so uh, highly recommended for doing laser cut kits um, if not just use some PVA it's absolutely fine um, if you want something that is a PVA that bonds a bit faster then deluxe material speed bond will do the job as well so if you've got any of that knocking about um, then, then use that as well um, but uh, the other thing I'm going to have to do is, is trim this down to fit on the board as well. But apart from that, you can kind of see the beginnings of, of what we're going for here. Arches across the back, asphalt road in front of it, and to do that I'm going to be using uh, some uh, textured asphalt paint. Um, there's then going to be a, a Nightwing security fence uh, across the front here. And then we'll start to build up the, the yard scene in front of that as well. 
I do want to add some lighting in as well, so street lighting, lighting inside the, the buildings and the, um, and the engine shed once that then comes into place uh, later on. May even try and incorporate uh, an old disused water tower or something here. Um, yeah, a few different ideas with this. Uh, there's probably not going to be much greenery on it, maybe a little bit of foliage here and there where things are just overgrowing. Um, but not really a huge amount of grass area or anything like that. Um, be quite a sort of urban looking scene this one. But um, yeah, looking forward to making some progress on, on this. Um, so that's kind of where we're up to for now. Uh, don't forget that uh, in terms of what you've seen here in this video, these are all L-Cut Creative kits that are available on rail-stuff.com. Um, and they come with all the all the extra bits that you see lying around as well. This here is an engine shed kit from JS Models, so get in touch with JS Models for one of those. Um, but through this mini series, you'll see me using lots of other bits and pieces uh, from the Rail Stuff catalogue. Um, so let's make some progress, and I'll see you really soon. Thanks for watching.